Today's video is sponsored by ASICPrices.com. ASICPrices.com is one of my new favorite sites to scope out true profitability and ROI rankings before I make my next ASIC purchase. Check this out. I can simply enter my current electric rate and instantly see what ASICs are best suited for me. On top of that, let's say I want to find what ASIC miner is most profitable to stack Doge and Litecoin. Just select your algo and bam, there is the Bitmain L7. ASICPrices.com has taken things to the next level. Look at this. When you select a miner, look at all this amazing information. Miner statistics and overviews, historic miner prices, daily and 30 day mining revenue, trusted vendors, and much, much more. Go check out ASICPrices.com today. What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well, I am joined today by no other than Yeti. What's going on Yeti? How you doing? I'm doing great. So I invited Yeti on for a fun topic and I think it's one where we really need to look at it. So Yeti, are you ready to jump into this? Sure. All right. So I, I invited Yeti on to talk, you know, yeah, Dynex has kind of been the talk of the town recently. One from the profitability, second from the price discovery, even today that we've seen coming out of Dynex. So the big question I'd love to chat a little bit more about with Yeti is will Dynex save GPU mining? Now that's a broad, broad and a very, you know, strong statement there. So Talk to us a little bit from what you've seen in the GPU mining scene since Ethereum, because Ethereum was, you know, our, our pride and joy, and we lost it pretty much as a GPU miner from Proof Useful Work. And now we're without this savior, and we as GPU miners are looking for one. So really, what are your thoughts on the current state of GPU mining and how Dynex comes into play? Well, I mean, I mean, I think we've all been looking for that next big project, right? Mm -hmm. I think some of us more than others um <laughs> a lot of people have have pinned a lot of hopes on certain projects mm -hmm. after ethereum um you know just a few for example i know that um you know from a gpu perspective flux was mm -hmm. another one that people have been you know investing yeah. heavily yeah. in uh you've got dynex octa space there's a few now that are they're starting to, you know, push the boundaries of what mm -hmm. they're trying to do. There's also, you know, now new methods of making money as well, like your vast AIs. And, yep. um, you know, even I, I believe GPU Topia is another one now, mm -hmm. um, which is all done in your browser. Um, so, I mean, is Linux the, the savior? I mean, from my perspective um and obviously i'm looking at this from a technical perspective more yeah. than a private perspective right um for me at the moment they're the one group that's showing the most mm -hmm. progress um there are some other projects that are starting to really pick up some momentum now but dynex has been consistently pumping out update after update for the last three months and they're really, really pushing the boundaries of, you know, how busy can a, a single crypto project actually be? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you're right in that regard. I mean, I think some of the things I look at is like, um, I always think of DJ Mines when he, you know, he's, he's always hyped about AI and he's like, whoever, whatever project comes out that is utilizing AI or that we could participate in AI. Uh, will definitely be one that that brings you know some fruitfulness to GPU mining, and I see Dynex is kind of bridging that gap. And what I mean by that is Dynex is getting into um, you know, and I think you can you can kind of correct me here, but their model is very much compute. They're all about yes. compute. That's exactly what they're doing. But they're they're allowing GPU mining rigs to be used in their current state. We don't have to upgrade them. We don't have to bolster them up. We don't have to beef them up. They're able to be used exactly the way they are for mining Ergo, Ravencoin, Flux, whatever, but they can be flipped over to be utilized in this new hybrid methodology. And it's kind of this nice bridge between, I call it, you know, GPU mining and GPU mining 2.0. It's like the next era of mining. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's actually a good analogy. I mean, we went through this with Web. 1.0 to web 2.0 to now we're seeing the next iteration mm -hmm. of the web which will be web 3.0 right things yep. that are decentralized decoupled from the norm um 
and I think you're right, the the bridge for what they're doing. And I think this was a very um, interesting choice from Dynex, right? They they looked at what everyone else was doing and said, well, how do we distinguish ourselves differently from everyone else? They could have gone down the same route as, as Flux or Fast, where they need high bandwidth, yeah. custom, custom equipment, and they may not have got the upswing that they saw so far because they've they've really marketed themselves as something that is available to all miners not just a select few um and that's a good thing right there's got to be there's also got to be good enough competition in the industry from all ranges so your people that can go out and spend 50 grand on a rig to mm -hmm. the person who's already got their mining rig who spent a lot of money building that to be able to participate as well and i think that's a great idea so let's talk a little bit more and this is a good segue into just you know what makes a gpu mining rig ideal for dynex so when we're thinking yep. about a rig um you know the first thing that comes to mind for me is graphics cards that have high vram you know uh based off of that now why is that if, if people are listening and they're like okay i want to get in on dynex why is it that they're looking for GPUs that have more VRAM? So example, 3060 with 12 gigabytes versus a 3070 with eight. Why would you pick one over the other with Dynex? I mean, necessarily you don't need loads of VRAM. Okay. You do okay. need the VRAM. And of course, the more complex the job, the more, mm -hmm. you know, those Dynex chips it's going to request. But um, it's not so much... Um, the the vram per se the vram is what acts as the way to hold the job while it's being processed got it okay the the core is where really dynex sort of benefits hmm. okay <clears throat> if if you take from the example right um we've recently just seen the radeon 7 has been an absolute monster yeah on dynex right and that's a combination of its high bus bandwidth on its PCI Express bus, along with 16 gig of, of HBM or high bandwidth memory. Um, and it plays a crucial part. Is it the be all and end all? Not so much with Dynex. That's the benefit. It, even though it will benefit you on the number of chips you can have, um, it will not stop you being able to participate even if you had technically a two gig VRAM card. Hmm. I mean, it wouldn't be ideal, but you can at least participate. <laughs> so if I'm looking, if I'm in a situation, uh, NVIDIA, AMD, and I'm looking to to build the ideal rig right now, and let's look more in the middle, you know, we, we, we don't need to really go to the extreme because I, most GPU miners aren't going that far with some of these crazy like 100s and stuff like that. But where, where would you put, for NVIDIA and AMD, a GPU in the middle that would work well with Dynex? Okay, um, so power efficiency wise, um, realistically, my 3060 Ti's are very good on okay. uh, on Dynex. They're very power efficient. The 3070, again, mm -hmm. seems to be a king on most algorithms these days. <laughs> yep. Um, albeit that NVIDIA's double precision FP64 is not as great on NVIDIA as it is on, on mm. obviously AMD, but um, as a, if you've already got NVIDIA cards, 3060, 3060 Ti, 3070, okay. really not bad, not bad at all. Um, on an AMD side, um, 6600s, 6700s are fantastic. Um, if you've already bought into them now, obviously, if you're like our red furry friend and has got a ton of uh, <laughs> Radeon 7s lying yep. around, yep. then those are very, very good on Dynex. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw recently he built a 12 card rig and that's like, that's like the I, that's like the Ferrari for Dynex right there, which is, I think, oh, really, yeah. really, really cool. So, so we talked a little bit about, you know, um, the current state of Dynex and kind of where we are with that. And, and, and also like what rigs are really well with Dynex, you know, and, and I think we're all hopeful, you know, we're all hopeful that, you know, something returns a dollar back to GPU mining, you know, like it would be fantastic to see that as a daily, even daily profitability of a dollar on a GPU at a normalcy here, uh, which would be really good. So, so 
as a GPU miner, do I need to be concerned though when it comes to FPGAs or ASICs or anything like that with Dynex? Because as much as I want to be like all in on a project, I feel as we as miners, we get burned a lot uh, as GPU yeah. miners. And look at Caspa. Caspa is a phenomenal project. It's brought a lot of money into the scene for miners, but it came and went on GPUs. It feels like so quickly. And now ASICs, you got, you have to, if you want to do with my, uh, with, with Casper. So where are we at? What are your thoughts are with Dynex and FPGAs? I actually sat down with the team and actually asked them this question. It was one of the first things <laughs> I wanted to talk about with okay. them um, was what's the likelihood of you putting FPGAs on the network? Yeah. What's the likelihood of you putting ASICs on the network? And they are categorically adamant that they're not going to be on there ever. That's awesome. And the moment that they even get a uh, a sniff that somebody's thinking about doing it they will make sure that that is very much stopped straight away okay now would that mean something like a fork or what would that or a change of alco or how how could you combat in that without you know overhauling your entire project so that would probably be more like a like a fork okay. more than an algo change because okay. obviously the pouw side mm -hmm. would need to be all integrated it would be a massive undertaking um, but a fork to make it more resistant to that ASIC, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay. So then other things I think about too, when I'm thinking about the success of a project when it comes to GPU mining and like bringing us back to the day is uh, a few things on accessibility. So right now there's really only two miners out there that most are using when it comes to GPU mining. Um, do we hear from Dynex of working with other projects? I mean, you think like, one that comes to mind real quickly is like lol miner they seem to pick up projects very quickly but we haven't seen that adoption any reason for that like is it what sets dynex apart so i know of one more miner that's being in active development okay. at the moment um the the initial first look at it looked mm -hmm. very promising okay um but there's still work to be done on that one um, I've spoke recently to both uh, BZ mm -hmm. and a few other minor devs about, you know, maybe the uptake and why they haven't looked at it yet. Mm -hmm. And a lot come down to this this malop issue, right? Got but it. Okay. They were reluctant to want to spend all this time if they were going to just take it away down the road. Mm -hmm. So now with this going behind the stratum and it just be a case of initiation of the of the pouw side yeah it falls more in line with traditional minor devs and hopefully the uptake will be a little bit more yeah it sounds like that'll definitely help with adoption from some of these larger pools that haven't dipped into it yet because of the mail ob piece um it also comes to mind too something like unminable i know like speaking with their team on dynex that was one of the, the the challenges was how do we go ahead and adopt and deal with that versus okay now it's just another pool we're setting up like i think that i think that will really help the project out which i'm i'm excited for um the other part for me as a miner is um liquidation and abilities to liquidate we don't see dynex on a ton of platforms now that isn't necessarily uh the project's fault i mean traditionally so more of these grassroots projects aren't paying their way to a platform. They're more waiting for a platform to adopt it. Uh, what are your thoughts on that when it comes down to the success of, of Dynex yeah, right I'm, now? I mean, more exchanges are always, you know, a good thing. Uh, as long as they get reputable exchanges, of course. Yeah. Um, they've announced two more um, that are coming very soon. They haven't announced who they are yet. Okay. But, um, that I know there's two more coming. That's awesome. So that'll be an you know another another great way to increase mm -hmm. the overview on it. The the volume will be able to go up some more. It'll open up new avenues for on on ramps and off ramps. It's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, I mean I know, and that's the big thing. It's like as much as every project wants you to mine and huddle we need to be realistic as the proof of work where the liquidation needs is important in order to cover costs and operating costs. Um, cool. especially, you know, I mean, look at Ethereum and look where Ethereum yeah. was right before it went to proof of stake. I mean, 
uh, you know, the amount that was sold per day was insane. Uh, but look how much, look how many, how many people I talked to that still are holding Ethereum now, even all this time since the project moved away from it and moved more to proof of stake. So last thing we'll chat about here is price. So today we've, we've, we're over a dollar again, which is awesome. Um, we're recording this on the 7th of October. Um, talk about price, you know, originally, you know, we saw Dynex go over a dollar some time ago. Um, what alluded to that? Do you know what the real, like, like the driving factor was behind that, that we saw that spike? Um, I guess the, the first big pump was all around when they started releasing their SDK platform, right? Mm -hmm. Their, their software development kit, um, basically allowing people to have a play with, with Dynex. Mm -hmm. Um, this price discovery, I would think is probably around, you know, the, the new extra bits they're rolling out mm -hmm. their their new, so their new super sampling for images, um, some new, uh, SDK packages. So now they're, they're supporting a whole bunch of them. The only one they're missing at the moment is TensorFlow and okay. they're currently working on that right now. Um, once that's done, they will have a package, no matter which way you want to wow. do your machine learning to be able to push your, um, machine learning job to Dynex. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, I'd love to see now this is just dreaming, but would love to see some larger outside companies that have a demand for high compute coming in and partnering with them. You know, those are the yep. types of things that really take things to the moon where if it's you know, uh, and we can only hope a company like a Tesla comes in and needs, you know, machine learning or compute oh, wow, or something that'd be like amazing, that. Right? Uh, that. That's what I'm saying. Like, like those are the things, you know, um, but that, that's a resume builder right there, especially for the project being able to, to partner with some of these companies, but you gotta, you gotta start small. You can't go for, you know, uh, the diamond right away, uh, at all in that regard. Yeah. So to wrap things up here, talking about is Dynex, you know, will Dynex save GPU mining? Uh, final thoughts on just that topic right now. I mean, there's so much to look forward to over the next few months before the end of the year, right? Um, Dynex has already got the, the the bits listed up. There's a new wallet in the process of being beta tested. Hardware now. wallet, hopefully. <laughs> Hardware wallet's been announced. Wow. Uh, okay. One, one key um, is their first one. They're also, I believe, having tentative talks with Tanja. Oh, okay, good. Yep, um, yep. So that would be a really good, good uptake for them. Um, but I know they've got a new software wallet coming. They've got, obviously, their Dynex Marketplace is coming. Mm -hmm. um, the new TensorFlow packages for, for their machine learning. And something that they announced in their Discord yesterday and will be, I'm sure, alluded to a little bit more at, in their <laughs> latest AMA that's coming up. Um, is something that they call Dynex Solve X. Oh, um, is that a different algorithm? No. Oh, okay. Got you. Think okay. of it like an, an add-on to Dynex Solve. Um, Interesting. Okay. But I don't want to spoil the surprise. Oh, it's I don't okay. <laughs> um, I don't want to spoil that surprise because it's something that they've they've been mulling over for a while. Wow. Um, with the team, and if they can nail this idea, then oh yeah, then really it's going to put them in a, in a very different league for how they do their their work in going forward mm. so no it's fantastic i mean i think it's it's exciting to hear that so many things dynex has so many things going for it um there's already some decent price discovery now in the current market which every project is struggling right now in the current market so to see them flourishing in the market growing in the market i'll be honest it's a gpu miner I'm all for it. You know, Dynex is not super power intensive. Uh, I'm not spending a lot of operating, you know, expenses to run the machines on it. Um, and I think, as you said, over the next few months before end of year, you know, the team is taking the proper steps. We're seeing more exchanges come on, the expansions of the project, the more demand for it, you know, new technologies coming out. I think it's fantastic. I mean, who am I to judge? At the end of the day, I'm a miner and, and, and us miners are greedy. And we, we just, we're, we're, we are searching for profitability wherever it may lie. So Yeti, I do appreciate you coming on today to talk about no will Dynex save GPU mining? Guys, thank you guys very much for joining me today. I'll see you guys next time. Where are my investors at? Who's interested in investing in a Bitcoin mining farm, but you think you don't have the capital to do so? 
the team at Spartan Bitcoin Mining has you covered. Check this out. Spartan Bitcoin Mining has been hard at work building out their infrastructure and growing like crazy, providing an avenue for traditional investors to take part in the crypto mining scene through, well, traditional investing methods. The bear market is the perfect time to put your money to work. Spartan Bitcoin Mining makes it easy for the little guys to participate and invest for as little as $300. Or if you're a whale, the team has you covered as well. Follow the link in the video description to learn more about Spartan Bitcoin Mining and tell them the hobbyist miner sent you.